is the chief executive. He is responsible for the governing board of the college for education programs and administration of the college. Next in hierarchy of authority is the deputy commandant who is also the director of studies of the college. Others who make up the organization structure of the college include the college secretary, the provost center for strategic research and studies, directors, members of directing staff and research fellows. The college governing board is vested with the responsibility of directing the affairs of the college as well as approving policies and long-term plan of activities for the college. The Honorable Minister of Defense is the Chairman of the College Board, while the Chief of Defense Staff, Chief of Army Staff, Chief of Naval Staff, Chief of the Air Staff, and Commandant National Defense College are members. The Permanent Secretary, Minister of Defense, is the Secretary of the Board. As a leading strategic national defense and security institution, the National Defense College plays an important role in the national defense and security delivery, as well as professional development of strategic leaders required for the Nigerian Armed Forces, Ministries, Departments and Agencies. This is intended to ensure a thorough understanding of their roles in sustaining a thriving democracy, national security and national development. Hence, the mission of the college remains to impart knowledge and develop expertise and skills of senior military officers and their civilian counterparts through a firm understanding of all the essential factors that impact on national security and prepare them for the higher responsibilities at operational and strategic levels in both national and international assignments. The mission and philosophy of the college is pursued through series of lectures, seminars, workshops, conferences, and syndicate assignments. The participants undertake advanced academic research at national strategic policy level through the writing of term papers and all year-round research projects on approved topics of current national interest to enable the participants develop an in-depth understanding of elements of national power which will aid in the formulation of strategies to enhance national security. The college also conducts geostrategic tours of the nation, African continent and other parts of the world. National Defense College Nigeria is the apex military training institution for the armed forces of Nigeria and a center of excellence for peace support operations training at the strategic level in West Africa. Formerly known as National War College, the National Defense College was established in 1992 as the highest military institution for the training of senior military officers in Nigeria. The college is dedicated to preparing selected senior military officers, police officers and civil servants from strategic ministries, departments and agencies of the federal government of Nigeria for highest responsibilities. It also trains officers from the military of friendly African and foreign nations. The college first commenced operation in Lagos before moving to Abuja in August 1995. The college is presently located along Herbert Macaulay Way, Abuja. However, construction work at the college permanent site at Piwe, Abuja is at an advanced stage, with plans to relocate the college to its permanent site as soon as the construction work is completed. In terms of organization and structure of the college, 
the college is organized into three branches, namely the academic faculty, administrative and logistics branch, and the center for strategic research and studies. The college is headed by the commandant, who is the chief executive. He is responsible for the governing board of the college for education programs and administration of the college. Next in hierarchy of authority is the deputy commandant, who is also the director of studies of the college. Others who make up the organization structure of the college include the college secretary, the provost center for strategic research and studies, directors, members of directed staff, and research fellows. The college governing board is vested with the responsibility of directing the affairs of the college as well as approving policies and long-term plan of activities for the college. The Honorable Minister of Defense is the chairman of the college.
Chief of Defense Staff, Chief of Army Staff, Chief of Naval Staff, Chief of the Air Staff, and Commandant National Defense College are members. The Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Defense, is the Secretary of the Board. As a leading strategic national defense and security institution, the National Defense College plays an important role in the national defense and security delivery as well as professional development of strategic leaders required for the Nigerian Armed Forces, Ministries, Departments and Agencies. This is intended to ensure a thorough understanding of their roles in sustaining a thriving democracy, national security and national development. Hence, the mission of the college remains to impart knowledge and develop expertise and skills of senior military officers and their civilian counterparts through a firm understanding of all the essential factors that impact on national security and prepare them for the higher responsibilities at operational and strategic levels in both national and international assignments. The mission and philosophy of the college is pursued through series of lectures, seminars, workshops, conferences, and syndicate assignments. The participants undertake advanced academic research at national strategic policy level through the writing of term papers and all year-round research projects on approved topics of current national interest to enable the participants develop an in-depth understanding of elements of national power which will aid in the formulation of strategies to enhance national security. The college also conducts geostrategic tours of the nation, African continent and other parts of the world. National Defense College Nigeria is the apex military training institution for the armed forces of Nigeria and a center of excellence for peace support operations training at the strategic level in West Africa. Formerly known as National War College, the National Defense College was established in 1992 as the highest military institution for the training of senior military officers in Nigeria. The college is dedicated to preparing selected senior military officers, police officers and civil servants from strategic ministries, departments and agencies of the federal government of Nigeria for highest responsibilities. It also trains officers from the military of friendly African and foreign nations. The college first commenced operation in Lagos before moving to Abuja in August 1995. The college is presently located along Herbert Macaulay Way, Abuja. However, construction work at the college permanent site at Piwe Abuja is at an advanced stage, with plans to relocate the college to its permanent site as soon as the construction work is completed. In terms of organization and structure of the college, the college is organized into three branches, namely the academic faculty, administrative and logistics branch, and the center for strategic research and studies. The college is headed by the commandant who is the chief executive. He is responsible for the governing board of the college for education programs and administration of the college. Next in hierarchy of authority is the deputy commandant who is also the director of studies of the college. Others who make up the organization structure of the college include the college secretary, the provost center for strategic research and studies, directors, members of directing staff and research fellows. The college governing board is vested with the responsibility of directing the affairs of the college 
as well as approving policies and long-term plan of activities for the college. The Honorable Minister of Defense is the Chairman of the College Board, while the Chief of Defense Staff, Chief of Army Staff, Chief of Naval Staff, Chief of the Air Staff, and Commandant National Defense College are members. The Permanent Secretary, Minister of Defense, is the Secretary of the Board. As a leading strategic national defense and security institution, the National Defense College plays an important role in the national defense and security delivery, as well as professional development of strategic leaders required for the Nigerian Armed Forces, Ministries, Departments and Agencies. This is intended to ensure a thorough understanding of their roles in sustaining a thriving democracy, national security and national development. Hence, the mission of the college remains to impart knowledge and develop expertise and skills of senior military officers and their civilian counterparts through a firm understanding of all the essential factors that impact on national security and prepare them for the higher responsibilities at operational and strategic levels in both national and international assignments. The mission and philosophy of the college is pursued through series of lectures, seminars, workshops, conferences, and syndicate assignments. The participants undertake advanced academic research at national strategic policy level through the writing of term papers and all year-round research projects on approved topics of current national interest to enable the participants develop an in-depth understanding of elements of national power which will aid in the formulation of strategies to enhance national security. The college also conducts geostrategic tours of the nation, African continent and other parts of the world. National Defense College Nigeria is the apex military training institution for the armed forces of Nigeria and a center of excellence for peace support operations training at the strategic level in West Africa. Formerly known as National War College, the National Defense College was established in 1992 as the highest military institution for the training of senior military officers in Nigeria. The college is dedicated to preparing selected senior military officers, police officers and civil servants from strategic ministries, departments and agencies of the federal government of Nigeria for highest responsibilities. It also trains officers from the military of friendly African and foreign nations. The college first commenced operation in Lagos before moving to Abuja in August 1995. The college is presently located along Herbert Macaulay Way, Abuja. However, construction work at the college permanent site at Piwari, Abuja is at an advanced stage, with plans to relocate the college to its permanent site as soon as the construction work is completed. In terms of organization and structure of the college, the college is organized into three branches, namely the academic faculty, administrative and logistics branch, and the center for strategic research and studies. The college is headed by the commandant, who is the chief executive. He is responsible for the governing board of the college for education programs and administration of the college. Next in hierarchy of authority is the deputy commandant who is also the director of studies of the college. Others who make up the organization structure of the college include the college secretary, the provost center for strategic research and studies,
directors, members of directing staff and research fellows. The College Governing Board is vested with the responsibility of directing the affairs of the college as well as approving policies and long-term plan of activities for the college. The Honorable Minister of Defence is the Chairman of the College Board, while the Chief of Defence Staff, Chief of Army Staff, Chief of Naval Staff, Chief of the Air Staff, and Commandant National Defence College are members. The Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Defence, is the Secretary of the Board. As a leading strategic national defence and security institution, the National Defence College plays an important role in the national defence and security delivery as well as professional development of strategic leaders required for the Nigerian Armed Forces, Ministries, Departments and Agencies. This is intended to ensure a thorough understanding of their roles in sustaining a thriving democracy, national security and national development. Hence, the mission of the college remains to impart knowledge and develop expertise and skills of senior military officers and their civilian counterparts through a firm understanding of all the essential factors that impact on national security and prepare them for the higher responsibilities at operational and strategic levels in both national and international assignments. The mission and philosophy of the college is pursued through series of lectures, seminars, workshops, conferences and syndicate assignments. The participants undertake advanced academic research at national strategic policy level through the writing of term papers and all year-round research projects on approved topics of current national interest to enable the participants develop an in-depth understanding of elements of national power which will aid in the formulation of strategies to enhance national security. The college also conducts geostrategic tours of the nation, African continent and other parts of the world. Exits are marked in red as shown on the screen. 
In the event of an emergency, a fire alarm will be sounded, followed by appropriate announcement through the public address system regarding the evacuation procedure for all occupants accordingly, the guests of honor, members of the high table, and VIPs seated on the front row are to use emergency exit 1 for evacuation. Guests and participants on the next four rows on the both sides of the aisle are to use emergency exit 2, while guests and participants on the fifth rows of seats up to the back end are to use four and five rear emergency exits closest to them for evacuation. Guests are strongly advised to avoid panic and stampede to prevent unnecessary casualties. Upon exiting the building, everyone is expected to assemble at the most point located at the front entrance of this building for further briefing. And that's the end of the safety brief. Thank you for your attention. National Defense College Nigeria is the apex military training institution for the armed forces of Nigeria and a center of excellence for peace support operations training at the strategic level in West Africa. Formerly known as National War College, the National Defense College was established in 1992 as the highest military institution for the training of senior military officers in Nigeria. The college is dedicated to preparing selected senior military officers, police officers and civil servants from strategic ministries, departments and agencies of the federal government of Nigeria for highest responsibilities. It also trains officers from the military of friendly African and foreign nations. The college first commenced operation in Lagos before moving to Abuja in August 1995. The college is presently located along Herbert Macaulay Way, Abuja. However, construction work at the college permanent site at Piwe, Abuja is at an advanced stage with plans to relocate the college to its permanent site as soon as the construction work is completed. In terms of organization and structure of the college, the college is organized into three branches, namely the academic faculty, administrative and logistics branch, and the center for strategic research and studies. The college is headed by the commandant who is the chief executive. He is responsible for the governing board of the college for education programs and administration of the college. Next in hierarchy of authority is the deputy commandant who is also the director of studies of the college. Others who make up the organization structure of the college include the college secretary, the provost center for strategic research and studies, directors, members of directing staff and research fellows. The college governing board is vested with the responsibility of directing the affairs of the college as well as approving policies and long-term plan of activities for the college. The Honorable Minister of Defense is the Chairman of the College Board, while the Chief of Defense Staff, Chief of Army Staff, Chief of Naval Staff, Chief of the Air Staff, and Commandant National Defense College are members. The Permanent Secretary, Minister of Defense, is the Secretary of the Board. As a leading strategic national defense and security institution, the National Defense College plays an important role in the national defense and security delivery, as well as professional development of strategic leaders required for the Nigerian Armed Forces, Ministries, Departments and Agencies. This is intended to ensure a thorough understanding of their roles in sustaining a thriving democracy, national security and national development. Hence, 
the mission of the college remains to impart knowledge and develop expertise and skills of senior military officers and their civilian counterparts through a firm understanding of all the essential factors that impact on national security and prepare them for the higher responsibilities at operational and strategic levels in both national and international assignments. The mission and philosophy of the college is pursued through series of lectures, seminars, workshops, conferences, and syndicate assignments. The participants undertake advanced academic research at national strategic policy level through the writing of term papers and all year-round research projects on approved topics of current national interest to enable the participants develop an in-depth understanding of elements of national power which will aid in the formulation of strategies to enhance national security. The college also conducts geostrategic tours of the nation, African continent and other parts of the world. College located in the college headquarters building. There are five entrance and exit doors in this hall. Exit 1 serves as the main entrance and is located on the left hand side of the hall. Exit 2 is on the right hand side of the hall. Exit 3 is on the rear right hand side and is exclusively for the use of the commandants of the college on routine basis and not for emergencies while exit 4 and 5 are at the rear of the hall. There are also lavatories located outside the hall upon exiting through exit 4 and 5. The ushers will be of assistance in this regard if necessary. Guests are therefore free to use these conveniences if they have the need to do so. I will now take you through the evacuation procedure from this hall. In the event of any emergency, kindly note that the emergency exits are marked in red as shown on the screen. In the event of an emergency, a fire alarm will be sounded, followed by appropriate announcements through the public address system regarding the evacuation procedure for all occupants accordingly, the guests of honor, members of the high table, and VIPs seated on the front row are to use emergency exit 1 for evacuation. Guests and participants on the next four rows on the both sides of the aisle are to use emergency exit 2, while guests and participants on the fifth rows of seats up to the back end are to use four and five rear emergency exits closest to them for evacuation. Guests are strongly advised to avoid panic and stampede to prevent unnecessary casualties. Upon exiting the building, everyone is expected to assemble at the muster point located at the front entrance of this building for further briefing. And that's the end of the safety brief. Thank you for your attention. National Defence College Nigeria is the apex military training institution for the armed forces of Nigeria and a center of excellence for peace support operations training at the strategic level in West Africa. Formerly known as National War College, the National Defence College was established in 1992 as the highest military institution for the training of senior military officers in Nigeria. The college is dedicated 
to preparing selected senior military officers, police officers, and civil servants from strategic ministries, departments, and agencies of the federal government of Nigeria for highest responsibilities. It also trains officers from the military of friendly African and foreign nations. The college first commenced operation in Lagos before moving to Abuja in August 1995. The college is presently located along Herbert Macaulay Way, Abuja. However, construction work at the college permanent site at Piwi, Abuja is at an advanced stage with plans to relocate the college to its permanent site as soon as the construction work is completed. In terms of organization and structure of the college, the college is organized into three branches, namely the academic faculty, administrative and logistics branch, and the center for strategic research and studies. The college is headed by the commandant who is the chief executive. He is responsible for the governing board of the college for education programs and administration of the college. Next in hierarchy of authority is the deputy commandant who is also the director of studies of the college. Others who make up the organization structure of the college include the college secretary, the provost center for strategic research and studies, directors, members of directing staff and research fellows. The college governing board is vested with the responsibility of directing the affairs of the college as well as approving policies and long-term plan of activities for the college. The Honorable Minister of Defense is the chairman of the college board, while the Chief of Defense Staff, Chief of Army Staff, Chief of Naval Staff, Chief of the Air Staff, and Commandant National Defense College are members. The Permanent Secretary, Minister of Defense, is the Secretary of the Board. As a leading strategic national defense and security institution, the National Defense College plays an important role in the national defense and security delivery, as well as professional development of strategic leaders required for the Nigerian Armed Forces, ministries, departments and agencies. This is intended to ensure a thorough understanding of their roles in sustaining a thriving democracy, national security and national development. Hence, the mission of the college remains to impart knowledge and develop expertise and skills of senior military officers and their civilian counterparts through a firm understanding of all the essential factors that impact on national security and prepare them for the higher responsibilities at operational and strategic levels in both national and international assignments. The mission and philosophy of the college is pursued through series of lectures, seminars, workshops, conferences, and syndicate assignments. The participants undertake advanced academic research at national strategic policy level through the writing of term papers and all year-round research projects on approved topics of current national interest to enable the participants develop an in-depth understanding of elements of national power which will aid in the formulation of strategies to enhance national security. The college also conducts geostrategic tours of the nation, African continent and other parts of the world. Exit 1 serves as the main entrance and is located 
on the left hand side of the hall. Exit 2 is on the right hand side of the hall. Exit 3 is on the rear right hand side and is exclusively for the use of the commandants of the college on routine basis and not for emergencies, while exit 4 and 5 are at the rear of the hall. There are also lavatories located outside the hall upon exiting through exit 4 and 5. The ushers will be of assistance in this regard if necessary. Guests are therefore free to use these conveniences if they have the need to do so. I will now take you through the evacuation procedure from this hall. In the event of any emergency, kindly note that the emergency exits are marked in red as shown on the screen. In the event of an emergency, a fire alarm will be sounded, followed by appropriate announcements through the public address system regarding the evacuation procedure for all occupants accordingly, the guests of honor, members of the high table and VIPs seated on the front row are to use emergency exit 1 for evacuation. Guests and participants on the next four rows on the both sides of the aisle are to use emergency exit 2 while guests and participants on the fifth rows of seats up to the back end are to use four and five rear emergency exits closest to them for evacuation. Guests are strongly advised to avoid panic and stampede to prevent unnecessary casualties. Upon exiting the building, everyone is expected to assemble at the most point located at the front entrance of this building for further briefing. And that's the end of the safety brief. Thank you for your attention. National Defence College Nigeria is the apex military training institution for the armed forces of Nigeria and a center of excellence for peace support operations training at the strategic level in West Africa. Formerly known as National War College, the National Defence College was established in 1992 as the highest military institution for the training of senior military officers in Nigeria. The college is dedicated to preparing selected senior military officers, police officers and civil servants from strategic ministries, departments and agencies of the federal government of Nigeria for highest responsibilities. It also trains officers from the military of friendly African and foreign nations. The college first commenced operation in Lagos before moving to Abuja in August 1995. The college is presently located along Herbert Macaulay Way, Abuja. However, construction work at the college permanent site at Piwi, Abuja is at an advanced stage with plans to relocate the college to its permanent site as soon as the construction work is completed. In terms of organization and structure of the college, the college is organized into three branches, namely the academic faculty, administrative and logistics branch, and the center for strategic research and studies. The college is headed by the commandant who is the chief executive. He is responsible for the governing board of the college for education programs and administration of the college. Next in hierarchy of authority is the deputy commandant who is also the director of studies of the college. Others who make up the organization structure of the college include the College Secretary, the Provost Center for Strategic Research and Studies, Directors, Members of Directing Staff and Research Fellows. The College Governing Board is vested with the responsibility of directing the affairs of the College as well as approving policies and long-term plan of activities for the College. The Honorable Minister of Defense is the Chairman of the College Board, while the 
Chief of Defense Staff, Chief of Army Staff, Chief of Naval Staff, Chief of the Air Staff, and Commandant National Defense College are members. The Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Defense, is the Secretary of the Board. As a leading strategic national defense and security institution, the National Defense College plays an important role in the national defense and security delivery as well as professional development of strategic leaders required for the Nigerian Armed Forces, Ministries, Departments and Agencies. This is intended to ensure a thorough understanding of their roles in sustaining a thriving democracy, national security and national development. Hence, the mission of the college remains to impart knowledge and develop expertise and skills of senior military officers and their civilian counterparts through a firm understanding of all the essential factors that impact on national security and prepare them for the higher responsibilities at operational and strategic levels both national and international assignments. The mission and philosophy of the college is pursued through series of lectures, seminars, workshops, conferences and syndicate assignments. The participants undertake advanced academic research at national strategic policy level through the writing of term papers and all year round research projects on approved topics of current national interest to enable the participants develop an in-depth understanding of elements of national power which will aid in the formulation of strategies to enhance national security. The college also conducts geostrategic tours of the nation, African continent and other parts of the world. College located in the college headquarters building. There are five entrance and exit doors in this hall. Exit 1 serves as the main entrance and is located on the left hand side of the hall. Exit 2 is on the right hand side of the hall. Exit 3 is on the rear right hand side and is exclusively for the use of the commandants of the college on routine basis and not for emergencies while exit 4 and 5 are at the rear of the hall. There are also lavatories located outside the hall upon exiting through exit 4 and 5. The ushers will be of assistance in this regard if necessary. Guests are therefore free to use these conveniences if they have the need to do so. I will now take you through the evacuation procedure from this hall. In the event of any emergency, kindly note that the emergency exits are marked in red as shown on the screen. In the event of an emergency, a fire alarm will be sounded, followed by appropriate announcement through the public address system regarding the evacuation procedure for all occupants accordingly, the guests of honor, members of the high table, and VIPs seated on the front row are to use emergency exit 1 for evacuation. Guests and participants on the next four rows on the both sides of the aisle are to use emergency exit 2, Hello. while guests Hello. and participants on the fifth rows of seats up to the back end are to use four and five rear emergency exits closest to them for evacuation. Hello. Guests are strongly advised to avoid panic and stand Control. to prevent unnecessary Okay, the band, very shortly you'll give us some good soft music. But meanwhile, let me the band
The band. The band, you can stay your music for now. Thank you. Let me, on behalf of the commandant, welcome our esteemed guest in the hall. And of course, this very unique course. The participants of National Defense College course 28. It's a very unique course in all ramifications. Hence, we are here gathered this morning to witness the graduation lecture for National Defense College course 28. We're still expecting our special guest speaker, the Honorable Minister of Communications and Digital Economy. Very shortly, he will be here and we'll get started with this lecture. But meanwhile, you're most welcome from this vantage position. Let me acknowledge the provost of the Center for Strategic Research and Studies. His Excellency Ambassador Dr. C. W. Wigwe. So you're most welcome. Thank you, sir. I thought we'll put our hands together for him. The director coordination, who is the lead master of ceremony, is also set. He's here with us. Brigadier General A. E. Edit. A round of applause for him. one of our respected directing staff, and I think he is the, the chairman of uh, National Defense College Consult, Air Commodore E. O'Hanley, retired but not tired. A round of applause for him. Our esteemed members of faculty, as the directors and directing staff, they are behind. Please, let's put our hands together for them. Because somehow they have molded this course to what it is, despite the challenges and others. That's why I said, look, this course is a unique course, very, very unique. So many challenges, but by and large, you were able to overcome. And today we are gathered to start the process for the award of the Fellow of the Defense College. And that will be done on Thursday. By the special grace of God, every one of you will definitely have that prestigious award. A round of applause for yourselves. Now let me reel out what the program will do. The program for today will be like. As stated earlier on, we are expecting a special guest speaker. He'll be here shortly with us. That's the Honorable Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, Dr. Issa Ali Ibrahim Patami. Upon his arrival, the Commandant will give the welcome address. Thereafter, the Lead Master of Ceremony, the Director of Coordination, will introduce a guest speaker. After the introduction, he will deliver his lecture titled Digital Economy and National Development in Nigeria. After the lecture, the Chairman, National Defense College, Governing Board, and Honorable Minister of Defense will deliver his remarks. Thereafter, we'll have the presentation of gifts and the vote of thanks by the Deputy Commandant Director of Studies. A very brief one for the, apart from the lecture that obviously will take quite a, a considerable time, the others are very, very brief. 
one or before 1200 hours. We're expected to be done with that. And as part of activities lined for the graduation of this noble course, tomorrow we'll have uh, the cocktail beginning from 1500 hours to 1700 hours. Thereafter, the grand finale on Thursday, the graduation of this unique course and award of the Fellowship of the Defense College to all our distinguished participants will be done on Thursday. Just about the same time from 009 hours through till 12.00 uh, hours. So by and large, once again, we say thank you. You're most welcome. Uh, control, please. Let's again have the, the safety briefs. Let's have that. Thereafter, the band, please get prepared to give us some light music. We are in a batter hall of a National Defense College located in the college headquarters building. There are five entrance and exit doors in this hall. Exit 1 serves as the main entrance and is located on the left hand side of the hall. Exit 2 is on the right hand side of the hall. Exit 3 is on the rear right hand side and is exclusively for the use of the commandants of the college on routine basis and not for emergencies, while exit 4 and 5 are at the rear of the hall. There are also lavatories located outside the hall upon exiting through exit 4 and 5. The ushers will be of assistance in this regard if necessary. Guests are therefore free to use these conveniences if they have the need to do so. I will now take you through the evacuation procedure from this hall. In the event of any emergency, kindly note that the emergency exits are marked in red as shown on the screen. In the event of an emergency, a fire alarm will be sounded, followed by appropriate announcement through the public address system regarding the evacuation procedure for all occupants accordingly, the guests of honor, members of the high table, and VIPs seated on the front row are to use emergency exit 1 for evacuation. Guests and participants on the next four rows on the both sides of the aisle are to use emergency exit 2 while guests and participants on the fifth rows of seats up to the back end are to use four and five rear emergency exits closest to them for evacuation. Guests are strongly advised to avoid panic and stampede to prevent unnecessary casualties. Upon exiting the building, everyone is expected to assemble at the muster point located at the front entrance of this building for further briefing. And that's the end of the safety brief. Thank you for your attention.
announcing the arrival of the chief of defense staff. Band, can we have light music, please?
announcing the arrival of our guest speaker and special guest of honor. Most welcome, sir. Please be seated. A special guest of honor as guest speaker, the Honorable Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Dr. Issa Ali Ibrahim Pantami. Chairman Senate Committee on Defense, Alhaji Aliu Wamako. Chairman House Committee on Defense, Honorable Baba Jimmy Benson. The Honorable Minister of Defense, Major General Bashir Magashi, retired, today represented by the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Defense, Alhaji Sabiu Zakari the Chief of Defense Staff, General A.G. Olanisuki, today represented by Major General J.A. Oruko, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General T.Y. Buratai, today represented by Major General E.N. Njoku, the Chief of Naval Staff, Admiral Ibokete Abbas, today represented by Rear Admiral I.K. Olaya, the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sidiq Abubakar, the Commandant, National Defense College, Heads of Ministries, Departments, and Agencies of Government, Your Excellencies, very senior officers serving and retired, Distinguished invited guests, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen, you are all welcome to the National Defense College. I am Brigadier General A. E. Edits, the Director of Coordination National Defense College and Lead Master of Ceremonies for this honorable and memorable occasion. Before we go further into today's proceedings, please permit me to highlight that the National Defense College is the apex military training institution of the Armed Forces of Nigeria, charged with the responsibility and mandates of preparing selected senior military, police, and paramilitary officers of security agencies in the country, as well as their counterparts in strategic ministries, departments, and agencies for higher national security responsibilities. The college also provides strategic training for officers from other allied nations. From inception to date, the National Defense College has trained a total of 2,447 officers. The ongoing National Defense College course 28 which will graduate on Thursday, 6th of August, consists of 112 participants, comprising 29 officers from the Nigerian Army, 22 from the Nigerian Navy, 16 from the Nigerian Air Force, 7 from the Nigeria Police Force. Others include 15 participants from ministries, departments, and agencies, as well as 18 allied participants. May I add that 
we've had the college is having the highest international participation in recent times. <laughs> During the course of training, the participants have received lectures from resource persons, academicians, government functionaries, technocrats, and leaders from various fields of endeavor. Today's graduation lecture is a capstone lecture intended to bring to a climax some of the salient issues that bear relevance to our contemporary national and global security environment. To do this, the college usually requests eminent personalities such as elder statesmen and impactful leaders from within and outside the shores of Nigeria to share their wealth of experience with the graduating participants. May I add that last year, on this same stage, we were privileged to have His Excellency Julius Madabeo, the President of Sierra Leone, to deliver the graduation lecture. Without much ado, may I at this stage, with a single honor and privilege, invite the Commandant, National Defense College, Rear Admiral M. M. Kadiri, to present his welcome address. The Commandant, sir. for the special guest of honor, the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Defense, representatives of the Chief of Defense Staff and Service Chiefs, may I have the privilege to correct that Rear Admiral M. A. Emoekere, or not Rear Admiral I.T. Olaya, is representing the Chief of Naval Staff. Controller General, Nigerian Immigration Service, Representative of the Inspector General of Police, DIG Barayam, a graduate of the National Defense College, distinguished invited guests, honorable participants of National Defense College Course 28, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor and privilege to welcome all our distinguished guests who have honored our invitation to the graduation lecture for the National Defense College Course 28. Please permit me to especially welcome the representative of the Honorable Minister of Defense and the guest speaker, Dr. Issa Ali Ibrahim, the Honorable Minister of Communications and Digital Economy. The graduation lecture has become a key component of the training program of the college and a major highlight of its annual graduation ceremonies. This is in keeping with an age-long and universal tradition of educational institutions to commemorate graduation with an intellectual discourse on a contemporary subject. Considering the historical antecedents, ceremonies for graduating students date from the early universities in Europe in the 12th century, but graduation lectures themselves have a much later origin. One of the earliest known records of an activity akin to a graduation lecture was the first commencement speech of Harvard University in 1642, which was held for just nine graduates. In their earliest form, graduation speeches were characterized by sheer oratory, but this has now changed in modern times. Graduation lectures are more fundamental, purposeful, and authoritative. Indeed, graduation lectures are now expected to, among other things, relate thematically to the mandate and objects of the training of educational institution, provide intellectual, 
logical and contextual analysis of a contemporary subject, motivate and inspire graduates as they move back to society, just as Course 28 is about to, and sometimes creatively set a tone for future direction and development in a subject of particular interest. I am proud to state that the National Defense College has over the years imbibed and adopted this universal and progressive tradition. I recall that in the last three courses, we have had three contemporary topics delivered by three iconic figures of our time. Specifically, in course 25, President Yoweri Kuguta Museveni of Uganda delivered a lecture on regional cooperation and the stability of member states, the East, the economic community of East African states in perspective. For course 26, President Adama Barrow of the Gambia delivered a lecture on democratic principles and post-conflict peace building imperative for the West African region. And just last year, as the MC earlier said, President Julius Madabio of Sierra Leone spoke on youth inclusiveness and good governance imperatives for regional security and development to cause 27. The lecture today represents a seemly continuation of this cherished tradition. Before I speak on the subject, permit me to present a flash situation report on the National Defense College Course 28. A total of 107, not 112, participants have successfully completed the course. These include, as earlier mentioned, 67 officers of the Nigerian Armed Forces, seven senior police officers, 15 participants from key ministries, departments, and agencies of government of Nigeria, and 18 senior military officers from the armed forces of friendly nations within Africa, Asia, and South America. A large part of the course was conducted online after the general lockdown associated with the COVID-19 pandemic. The course was conducted under the theme, Economic Diversification and National Development in Nigeria. Economic diversification is a broad-based broad strategy designed to cause positive and multi-sectoral economic growth and development. One of the recurrent lessons from the numerous intellectual engagements on true path to economic diversification in Nigeria is the imperative of a digitalized economy that is based on digital computer technologies conducting business through online transactions. It is therefore fitting that the graduation lecture for course 28 is titled Digital Economy and National Development in Nigeria. Having arrived at the subject of the lecture, the college did not look far to get a most competent and fitting guest lecturer. Without letting out too much, let me state that our guest speaker is a foremost teacher in information technology and a technocrat for excellence having headed the National Information Technology Department Agency for four years. He's currently the Honorable Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, whose vision of a digitalized economy for Nigeria gives continuous vigor to government's newfound policy trust in this direction. Clearly, we are built for a stimulating engagement on a very important and contemporary subject. This is in keeping with the extant policy of the National Defense College to continuously promote strategic level intellectual discourse in furtherance of Nigeria's security and development objectives. For the graduates in particular, this graduation lecture is a unique opportunity to listen to a most qualified speaker on the subject of digital economy in Nigeria at the moment. I urge you therefore to pay attention and share in its vast knowledge, practical experiences, vision, insights, and strategic plans. Once again, I welcome all our distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, to the graduation lecture of the National Defense College Course 28. Please, please sit back and enjoy the lecture. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you, sir. Before we continue proceedings, please permit me to announce that today representing the Chief of Naval Staff is Rear Admiral Emokwere, and not as earlier announced. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
We have now come to the high point of today's occasion, which is a lecture by the Honorable Minister of Communications and Digital Economy. Today's graduation lecture is titled Digital Economy and National Development in Nigeria. However, before I continue, permit me to introduce our special guest lecturer by reading out his abridged version of his curriculum vitae. Our esteemed guest lecturer, Dr. Issa Ali Ibrahim Pantami, is the Honorable Minister of Communications and first ever of Digital Economy of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He was born on 20th of October 1972 in Gombe State, Nigeria. Dr. Pantami graduated with a Bachelor of Technology in Computer Science from the Abubakar Tafawabalewa University, Bauchi. He thereafter proceeded to acquire two master's degrees from the same institution, one in Computer Science and the other in Technology Management. From then on, his scholarly pursuit took him to the prestigious Robert Gordon University, Aberdeen in Scotland where he backed a doctorate in computer science, specializing in computer information systems. Dr. Pantami has carved many other educational certificates, such as Certificate in Digital Transformation from Harvard University, United Kingdom. Others are as shown on the screen. It is important to state that our guest lecturer is also a conflict resolution expert with national and international experiences in that regards. Dr. Pantami is a man of many firsts and great achievements. Under his leadership as the first ever Minister of Communications and Digital Economy in Nigeria, a national digital economy policy and strategy has been developed. Also, a national broadband plan has been developed to deepen broadband penetration in the country. All the notable achievements of our esteemed guest lecturer are as shown on the screen. The youthful, resourceful, hardworking and dedicated Dr. Pantami is a recipient of many global awards too numerous to mention. Popularly known as the Digital Minister, Dr. Pantami is a global information technology citizen, a revered and highly respected fellow of the Nigerian and British computer societies, amongst many others. Our guest lecturer is happily married with children. Distinguished guests, senior officers, ladies and gentlemen, may I at this point request a hand of applause as I welcome the Honorable Minister to the podium to deliver his lecture. Honorable Minister of uh, Defense, Major General Bashir Magaji, retired, and also the Chairman of uh, the Governing Council of uh, National Defense College as well, represented by the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of uh, Defense, the 
service chiefs here present or represented the chief of defense staff, chief of army staff, chief of naval staff, chief of our air staff, the inspector general of police here represented, the controller general of our Nigeria immigration services here present, the commandant of our national defense college here present, the participants to this uh, very important course, course 28 of our National Defense College here present with us. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, all other protocols duly and respectfully observed, good morning. And may peace, mercy, and blessings be upon you. I am highly delighted to be here with you as a guest speaker for today's lecture or event organized by the National Defense College here in Abuja. I begin by appreciating the effort of uh, the commandant and uh, his team for inviting me to be the guest speaker of uh, today's event. This is an honor and I remain very humbled. I also use the opportunity to congratulate the graduates. I have been informed that we have 107 graduates for this year's course and uh, from 19 countries, at least uh, some from India, some from Nepal, some from Bangladesh, that is from Asia, while some are from Brazil, South America, and uh, around, maybe some are from African countries, around 14 African countries are part and parcel of this, including Nigeria. So we have 14 African countries, we have Nigeria 15, Nepal 16, Bangladesh 17, India 18, and Brazil 19. I hope I get it right. And uh, this is highly commendable, and I use the opportunity to congratulate the leadership of this National Defense College for what they have achieved so far. It is highly commendable to organize an event or a course like this where 19 countries participated. This is really encouraging, and this is a clear indication that we are the giants of Africa, not only by mere saying, but in real sense. And, and this is an area where we have vindicated that we are the giants of Africa with all sense of uh, humility. I also use the opportunity once again to congratulate the graduates for what they have achieved, the skill they have acquired, and also to extend the same felicitation to their family members and friends because uh, whatever you achieve, that happiness is with your family and your friends. So I use the opportunity to extend same to their family members and uh, uh, friends as well for what they have achieved so far. And I do hope that they will go back to their place of work or to their countries as uh, better citizens where they can add more value to the development of their respective countries. The topic of uh, today's discussion is digital economy and national development. Then the case study for the discussion is our country, Nigeria. So the topic can be digital economy for national development, a case study of uh, Nigeria. This topic is very apt and is very relevant indeed because uh, this COVID-19 pandemic has taught the world that digitalization is not just a mere luxury, but rather is a necessity. The digitalization of our economy, the digitalization of our processes, and the digitalization of all our activities is no more a luxury, but rather is a necessity. You will discover that our global leaders today 
conduct their meetings virtually. And for the first time in the history of Nigeria, with all sense of humility, that we coordinated the virtual Federal Executive Council, where we conducted the first, the second, the third, up to the tenth, and we are planning for the eleventh. This has never happened in the history of Nigeria, where the president of the country, the vice president, all other members of the council, particularly ministers, will sit in their offices or in anywhere they find themselves and conduct a meeting virtually where national issues are being discussed and decisions are being taken on behalf of the citizens. Why? It is because of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. The meeting is being conducted virtually. And there are many institutions in the country or globally that they are conducting their activities virtually today. And this pandemic has taught us that this journey for a digital economy or digitalization of our processes and activities is no more a luxury or optional, but rather it becomes a necessity. And through that, we will discover that a lot has been saved, if not because of this pandemic. The way people travel, the way sometimes officials travel, sometimes necessarily, is beyond your imagination. But now, because of the pandemic, we learn that many things can be conducted without unnecessarily traveling outside our countries. So this will go a long way in saving the cost, saving our time, and avoiding risk, as the case may be. So this is one of the things that we learn from pandemic 29, uh, this uh, COVID-19, that digital economy is real. And it's no more a luxury, but rather it's a necessity for our economy to develop. Because without digital economy, the situation we have found ourselves is, was going to be disastrous. But now with the digital economy, you will discover that most of the activities are ongoing. A lot is being achieved while we remain in our cities or in our homes or in our offices without traveling unnecessarily. Nigeria as a case study. However, before discussing this, we need to ask ourselves, what is a digital economy? There is no time to elaborate further on what a digital economy is, but I will just give a brief definition. Digital economy is a digitalized, is an economy that is based on a digitalized information and knowledge. Alternatively, you can say digital economy is an economy that leverages digital technologies. Any economy that leverages digital technologies to conduct activities online is called digital economy. Whether it is in e-commerce, whether it is in e-governance, or e-health, or e-agric, or e-security, as the case may be. Any economy that relies on digital technologies computer or smartphone, broadband connectivity, to conduct activities, that economy is called digital economy. In Nigeria, we have so many things in our favor, in our journey for digital economy in order to achieve a digital Nigeria. We have so many things in our favor. For example, if you look at the national systematic diagnostic report of our 2019 released by the World Bank. In Nigeria, our population today is approximately 200 million people. We are among the most populous nations globally today. When it comes to population, we are the leaders of Africa as well. With this population, if you look at it critically, you will discover that according to the report, Almost half of our population, half of our population aged between 30 years and below, not above. Half of our population, population is from 30 years and below. Some 29, some 28, some 27, 26, some even 10 years, some 5 years. This is really encouraging. Why? Because naturally, youth are more inclined to digital economies. 
they are more inclined to technologies and they are more, 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 more smarter when it comes to utilization of technology. The facilitator of the event just briefly recited my citation from first degree up to PhD. But what I just want to say, my area is a digital technology. But today, my daughter at home, that is in primary school, sometimes she will just pick up my mobile phone. The way she manipulates could be better than the way I manipulate the phone. You will see your daughter or your son, that is just in primary school, will just pick up your mobile phone. They will start opening some applications that you have never used them before on your phone. Sometimes you even wonder and ask them, how did you reach here? Why? That is why we call them digital natives. The only language they understand is that digital technology. And they are so much attached to it. Usually when you find out that you spend one hour or two hours at home without seeing your kid of five, six, seven, or eight years, eight years, without seeing them, the first thing that comes to your mind, most probably they have hijacked a tablet or a smartphone phone that has been connected to the internet. When you spend time at home without feeling anything, without seeing them, usually they have hijacked somebody's smartphone or tablet connected to the internet. They are busy going online, watching or conducting or uh, partaking in any game, as the case may be. This is to tell us that any population, any country that is blessed with youth, that country has the potentials of being a digitalized nation. Why? Because the citizens, majority of the citizens, are digital natives, as our case in Nigeria today. Uh, half of our population, approximately, is from the age of 30 and below. Thirdly, in Nigeria, another potential we have is our gross domestic product. According to that report of 2019 released by the World Bank, our GDP is approximately 450 billion USD, which is relatively encouraging. And at the same time, our broadband penetration is increasing by the day. Because when it comes to digital economy, there are key ingredients to achieve that. A country that embarks on a digital economy journey must ensure that there are ingredients that are key to the success of that journey. Number one, citizens should have their own bank account. Without bank account, you can hardly partake in e-commerce or any digital transaction. So bank account is key. Number two, when it comes to security of the transaction, digital identity is key as well. To ensure that each and every citizen has a digital ID, that is the responsibility of a National Identity Management Commission. Must ensure that each and every citizen has a digital ID so that the identity of the citizens will easily be tracked and will easily be traced. Without digital ID, then you will continue to develop digital economy, but with the fear of unknown, not knowing what will happen in the future. It, that what makes digital identity key in our country. And it's very important to give our support to NIMSI in any way possible. NIMSI is a federal government commission under the supervision of the secretary to the government of the federation to ensure that each and every citizen has a digital ID. That is key to our success when it comes to digital economy, most importantly, the security of our country. Number three, that country must ensure that citizens have smartphones. Smartphones are necessary for digital economy. Without smartphone, it's difficult to conduct anything virtually. Then number four, broadband connectivity. To ensure that citizens are connected, with, uh, have access to broadband. In Nigeria, 
the recent report released by the Nigerian Communications Commission, a commission under our supervision in our ministry, that the subscribers to internet in Nigeria, or the facilities that are subscribed to internet in Nigeria are approximately 189 million. However, you will discover one citizen could have up to two facilities connected to the internet. So it's around 189 million. So most probably our citizens connected to the internet today could be at least 100 million because some facilities could be a duplication. For example, I can have two mobile phones. All of them are connected to the internet. So if you remove the duplication, you will discover at least substantial number of our citizens have access to internet today in Nigeria. And also our broadband penetration is increasing by the day, particularly with our deliberate effort to ensure that most of the challenges and obstacles to broadband penetration are being addressed. And we will discuss this, I think, in our subsequent steps of our discussion. So this is a clear picture of what Nigeria is today when it comes to digital economy. Furthermore, if we look at it globally, we will also see that digital economy is dominating the economy of the world. And it has been playing a significant role in promoting the global economy. Digital economy does not occupy just a peripheral position when it comes to global economy, but rather it dominates the central position in our global economy. According to Oxford Economics, in 2016, four years ago, not 2019, in 2016, four years ago, the digital economy was estimated to be 11.5 trillion USD. 11.5 trillion USD. And according to World Expert, uh, World Economic Forum, the digital economy has been predicted to occupy a minimum of 60% of global economy in the next two years, that is by 2022. However, with this pandemic of COVID-19, that gap has been reduced that most probably by the end of 2020, beginning of 2021, digital economy is going to occupy a minimum of 60 to 70 percent of our, the world economy. And most probably by 2022, it is going to occupy a minimum of 80 percent of the world economy. This tells us that digital economy is dominating the economy of the world. And this tells us the earlier our nations prepare for the journey, the better for us. Because if you prepare early enough, you will be able to be the leaders. If you are proactive, other nations are going to copy from you. And at the same time, you are going to export your product and skills to other nations. But if you delay your journey, then you will end up as a consumer not contributing to it in any way by the means of production or providing skills. So that is why when it comes to digital economy, we must be proactive. And it requires taking risk. Because whenever you go online, then there are many potential dangers approaching you. That is inevitable. Today, there is no nation that is 100% secured virtually. And there is no country in the world that has 0% of cyber crime, none in the world. No matter how secured you are, other people are working day in, day out to compromise your own cyberspace. As they say, digital crime moves by the speed of the light, while cyber security, sorry, cyber crime moves by the speed of the light. While cyber security moves by the speed of the law, you know the speed of the law. Sometimes you will plan to have a law in place. It could take up to 10 years going first reading, second reading, doing this and that. The easiest it can take months. Whatever you want to do to promote cyber security, you look at the provision of the law. 
what the law says, what the constitution of your country says. You are trying to ensure that whatever you do is within the law. But cyber criminals do not respect the law. So they don't make reference to any law. And they are not under any obligation to make reference to any law. As long as they get access to compromise the system, they will do. They are anti-laws. But you as a cyber security expert, you always try to ensure whatever you do is within the confine of the law. So that is what makes cyber crim criminals more successful than cyber security experts. Because whatever we do, we look at the provision of the law. If there is no law in place that supports your action, sometimes you cannot take it. You start the process of getting the approval, the law in place, approaching the parliament, even looking at the best way, is it an executive bill, or is it a legislative bill, or is it a, a, a private bill? You think of the best way to come up with even a bill and to start the process. But when it comes to cyber crime, cyber criminals do not respect any law. In real sense, what they do is 100% against the law. So that is why their work is much, much easier than cyber security experts who respect the law. So what I mean by this, the more we try to promote digital economy, we must ensure that we take the necessary steps to ensure that our cyberspace is secured, is significantly secured. And we always try to ensure that we improve when it comes to securing our cyberspace. This is very important indeed. Many countries that have embarked on this journey of a digital economy have been very successful. In North America, in Asia, in Europe, there are many examples where countries has been, have been very successful when it comes to their journey for a digital economy. For example, in the US, digital economy has been contributing around 8.9% of their gross domestic product GDP. In 2019, through digital economy, they were able to create 1.5 million jobs. 5.1 million jobs through digital economy. In Nigeria, we are struggling with unemployment. Without digital economy, it is difficult to take care of our team in youth. It is only through digital innovation and entrepreneurship you will be able to create millions of jobs for Nigerians. And there are many opportunities to leverage on. So US, the US is, is a good example. In Europe, if you go to the Europe, there are many good examples, like Sweden is an example. Estonia is another example. The UK is another good example. There are many nations that have been very successful when it comes to digital economy journey. And it is good for the developing nations to ensure that we copy their models and at the same time we customize it by taking care of our peculiar challenges and situations to make sure that it is implemented at least accordingly. Furthermore, when it comes to our country, Nigeria, we started the journey for a digital economy officially, officially, on the 24th October 2019. I assume duty as the minister in charge of our communications on 21st October, 21st August 2019, when our portfolios were assigned by our boss, Mr. President, President Muhammad Buhari. I came to the ministry, I listened to the presentations of our, our permanent secretary and directors, then the chief executives of the parastatals under the purview of the ministry, and I discovered what was missing in Nigeria was digital economy. The approach of the ministry and the paras most of the parastatals then was more obsolete. It focuses more on ICT. The focus was ICT, information and communications technology. 
ICT today, if you just mention ICT, it is obsolete. Because it doesn't give you the actual dimension of what you want to achieve. Then I had a meeting with them after their presentations, looking at their achievements, journey so far, the challenges, and the missing gap. And I discover digital economy was officially missing in Nigeria. We sent a proposal to Mr. President, President Muhammadu Buhari, to redesignate the ministry and at the same time expand the scope of our responsibility and accommodate digital economy. That proposal was approved by Mr. President on the 17th October 2019. On 23rd October 2019, that was officially discussed adopted and announced by the Federal Executive Council. A day later, by 24th October 2019, we started the implementation. That implementation begins with uh, developing our national digital economy policy and national digital economy strategy. These are the two documents that we came up with. Firstly, the policy national digital economy policy for a digital Nigeria. That document was developed. Stakeholders were contacted. Conference and workshops were organized where the stakeholders were brought together to look into our draft, come up with recommendations, constructive criticisms, observations on how to improve the quality. That was done. And the document was launched and unveiled by Mr. President on 28 November 2019 at the International Conference Center here in Abuja. That launch and unveiling, that launching and unveiling marks the mark our journey for a digital Nigeria. It was on 28 November 2019. However, before that very day, we started some activities for a digital economy because the development of the policy on one hand and the implementation on the other were going simultaneously due to time constraint. The ministry was redesignated from Federal Ministry of our Communications to Federal Ministry of our Communications and Digital Economy. Digital Economy was added to it. In that policy, we adopted eight pillars that are key to the success of our journey of a digital Nigeria through digital economy. These eight pillars are, number one is developmental regulation. Number two is digital literacy and skills. Number three is a solid infrastructure. Number four is service infrastructure. Number five is digital services, development and promotion. Number six is soft infrastructure. Number seven is digital society and emerging technologies. Number eight is indigenous content. These are the eight pillars of our national digital economy policy for a digital Nigeria. If you look at the pillars, you will discover that whatever we intend to do has been mentioned under one of these eight pillars, starting with developmental regulation. We have regulatory agencies that regulate the ICT sector. This, the most prominent are National Information Technology Development Agency, NITDA, and Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC. These are the two regulatory bodies of our digital technologies in Nigeria. NITDA regulates the IT sector, while NCC regulates the telecommunications sector. And these two parastatals are under the supervision 
of the Federal Ministry of uh, Communications and Digital Economy. Their main responsibility is to come up with subsidiary legislation that will foster development of our digital economy. Their act, NIDA 2007 and NCC 2003, these two parliamentary acts have empowered the two parastatals to come up with a subsidiary legislation from the principal legislation establishing the two institutions. So they have been directed to immediately come up with subsidiary legislation that will promote digital economy in our country. Before occupying the current position, I was the then DG NIDA. We developed some documents that have been incorporated into our national digital economy now because they are relevant, like Nigeria Data Protection Regulation, National Cloud Computing Document. These are the two prominent ones that have been accommodated in our national digital economy policy and strategy. And currently, NIDA has been working on coming up with another subsidiary legislation that will provide security to our digital technologies. On the other hand, NCC has been working to ensure that mobile network operators and other internet service providers are well regulated to ensure that they provide services to our citizens in a situation where their security and privacy cannot be compromised. So this is under developmental regulation. Furthermore, under developmental regulation, we recently come up with another policy. The policy has been developed through collaboration between the Federal Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy on one hand, and the Office of the Head of our Civil Service of the Federation on the other, to ensure that our ministries, departments, and agencies, or our federal public institutions, adopt the document while conducting virtual activities, while promoting digital economy. The draft is ready. It could be presented in the next one or two weeks during our Federal Executive Council. This is to promote developmental regulation. Furthermore, we have been in touch with the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice on how to come up with another law that will promote digital economy in the country, like in the area of transaction. This is key because we discover there are missing gaps that we need to come up with at least full and principal legislation in that area. And this will go a long way in ensuring that our digital economy is very successful in our country. Pillar number two is digital literacy and skills. This is another pillar that wants to ensure that our citizens acquire either digital literacy or digital skills, as the case may be. It all depends on the level of your participation and the role you play in digital economy. Some, they require only the basic knowledge. So this is what digital literacy is all about. Only the basic knowledge on how to open their email, on how to purchase online, how to check the balance of their account online, how to partake in e-commerce online, how to fill up a form online, how to renew or apply for the renewal of their passport online. This is what they need, it's only digital literacy. While some require a moderate skills, some advanced skills, it all depends on the role you play in digital economy. Through that, even during this lockdown, in order to save time and ensure that we are very successful, we came up with what we call virtual academy during this lockdown period. In that virtual academy, we encourage Nigerians to enroll into our virtual institutions. You just sit at the comfort of your home, you enroll online, you partake in courses where you earn world-class certificates 
through courses being provided by IBM, Cisco, Huawei, Microsoft, and many more. We established two virtual institutions, and the most prominent is uh, digitalnigeria.gov.ng. Within that period, from the time we started to 23rd of April 2020, more than 36,000 Nigerians have enrolled into the virtual academy. More than 36,000. And this one is not basic skills. It has nothing to do with digital literacy, but rather digital skills. Because it's in the area of emerging technologies. Some in artificial intelligence, some in cyber security, some in internet of things, and many more. And the virtual institutions are still open for the citizens to enroll. Most of them end their certificates. And the certificates and the knowledge acquired are respected globally. And all these trainings are for free to all our citizens. This is to ensure that we provide digital skills to our citizens. Particularly today in the world, the direction of the world has completely changed. The world is no more about certificates today. It's about skills. Most importantly, when it comes to digital technologies, I don't know in military, but when it comes to my area, the whole world now is not about certificates. It's about skills. Why? Because many developed nations have discovered that many citizens graduate with certificates. But when they are employed, they cannot do the work. In real sense, we are not supposed to worship certificates. We are not supposed to give preference and priority to certificates, but rather to the skills. Why? Because certificate is supposed to be a validation of the skills that have been acquired. A situation where a student graduates with first class or second class in electrical engineering, computer engineering, or in IT or cyber security, you employ him, he cannot do the basic work for you, then the aim of the certificate has been defeated. Meaning the certificate has not validated the skills he has acquired. So one of our major challenges that we need to change in Nigeria and in many develop under developing nations and the developing nations is to ensure that we reduce the emphasis we put on certificates and focus more on skills. This is key. And as long as we fail to understand this, we will continue to be in trouble, particularly when it comes to delivering our responsibilities. China recently started the process of converting 600, 600 universities to skill centers. 600 universities are going to be converted to skills in centers in China. In Nigeria, we started with universities. We had 19, we reached up to 41 universities, and today we are approaching 200 universities or thereabout. Morocco recently came up with a model where they give more emphasis to skills rather than certificates. They train their citizens. They provide skills for them. Today in Morocco, many developed nations are contacting Morocco to support them with their citizens to go and work for them. Moroccans travel to Europe today with dignity. Why? Because of the skills they have acquired. They are being respected in Europe. It is at the time that our graduates are endangering their lives trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea illegally to cross to Europe. Why? Because we have certificates, and our certificates usually fail to validate the skills we have acquired. So the whole focus is about we must give more emphasis on skills rather than certificates. Most of the young innovators we have in Nigeria, some of them you will discover that their area is not completely ICT-related course, but they have been doing excellently well. Recent, last year, I led a team of young Nigerians 
to golf information technology exhibition and competition. A young Nigerian from Katana State developed an app that is called Chiniki Gat. It's just an artificial intelligence application. He participated in a competition in Dubai, United Arab Emirates in October 2019 from the team I led. He won first position out of 124 participants or more from other developed nations and developing nations. And he was a student of a polytechnic, not even university. And his course has nothing to do with computer science or ICT related. Today, he won first position globally. But when it comes to employment, you cannot employ him to do the work for you in our civil service today. Why? Firstly, he's not a graduate. Secondly, his course is not ICT related. But when it comes to skills, he won first position globally. So look at the contradiction. So are we after skills or after certificates? If it is after certificates, you end up employing someone with second class offer from a federal university, but when you assign a work for him, he cannot do. The application that boy has developed, I know there are many professors in ICT-related courses in Nigeria that cannot do even 50% of that. Why? It is because in Nigeria, our more focus is on certificates. That must change. And it's not only in Nigeria, in many developing nations. And this is what we have been trying to change, particularly in our sector, to ensure that our preference and our priority should be given to skills rather than certificates. A young Nigerian in 2016 developed an app in the US. His course was not computer science. That application was purchased by Apple company at the price of one billion US dollar. One billion. Go through the, the, the intellectual giants of digital economy today in the world, starting with Jeffrey Bezos of Amazon, Bill Gates of Microsoft, Mark Zuckerberg of uh, Facebook and many more. Most of them you will discover what they have achieved is outside academia, is outside university. They only partook in critical thinking, long time thinking, customer centricity, and many more. And they came up with so many applications and systems that have completely changed the world today. So this is very important. Most of the developed nations today, their priority is skills, not certificates. Certificate is important, but it's secondary to skills. If you have a work that you want it to be done, the first thing you need to ask yourself, who is the better person to do the work for me? That person that can do the work for you, whether he has that certificate or not, as long as he has the basic requirement, then you can allow him to do. In Nigeria today, with ordinary secondary certificate, or its equivalent, you can occupy the position of number one citizen. It's allowed constitutionally with just secondary certificate. Why? Because those who drafted the constitution knows that with the basic skills, with the basic certificate, and the required skills, you will be able to govern the nation of 200 million people. But when it comes to just a minor work, you say it must be second class offer. But position of number one citizen can be occupied by certificate, secondary certificate, or it's, it's equivalent. But when it comes to minor, we say there must be second class upper. Even second class lower is not respected in so many institutions today in, the, in government. Sometimes someone will graduate with third class, but he can do the work better than someone who graduated with first class. And there are many examples like that. In June this year, 2020, the President of the United States of America signed an executive order an executive order in which it gives preference to those with skills than those with certificates. Now it is an executive order in the U.S. that when there is any recruitment, the priority should be skills 
not your certificate. Only June this year. Deloitte recently announced that they conducted a research and discovered that the major companies in the world do not require you to tell them the university you attended or the certificate you have earned. What they are after is your skills. That is why it is no more a requirement in Amazon or Microsoft or Apple when you are applying for a job to say, I graduated from ATVU with computer science and I have MSc in computer science, MBA technology management and PhD from Robert Gordon University as it was announced. That is no more a requirement. The requirement is, what can I do? Let me justify to them the skills I have acquired. Even if that skills has been acquired from Pantami Village, as long as I can do the work, that is what they are after. Just if you design your CV, no need of any educational qualification. Go and create two columns, hard skills, artificial intelligence, cyber security, maybe internet of things, mention the hard skills. Create another column of soft skills, critical thinking, analytical thinking, collaborative thinking, communication skills, presentation skills, negotiation. These are the skills that are required today. With critical thinking, you can do something that 20 PhD holders cannot do. It's true critical thinking. Just, just homework given to staff of uh, Google that by tomorrow, just partake in critical thinking and come up with something that will change the world. One of their staff came up with gmail.com. It's only 24 hour critical thinking that he developed gmail.com. It's true 10 year critical thinking of Jeffrey Bezos that he, that he came up with amazon.com. Today he is the most richest person in the world. He got his first profit in 2004. Now in 2020, 16 years, he became the most richest person by 2017. And he got his first profit in 2004. Why? Because the whole world today is about skills. Not just about the certificate we acquire. That is why in our journey for digital Nigeria, through digital economy, we give more emphasis on skills. And we want to ensure that we provide an enabling environment for our citizens to acquire digital skills, as the case may be. And we have been organizing many trainings, training for women, training for children, catch them young, training for people with disabilities or special needs, training for civil servants, training for journalists, training for security institutions. We have many categories of our training that we provide. We want to ensure that our citizens are well educated and they acquire the skills required for our digital economy. Then number three is our solid infrastructure. Solid infrastructure is our pillar number three. And under that pillar, it focuses more on broadband penetration. Broadband penetration in Nigeria, by the time I came on board around August 2019, was the penetration was around 30%. We immediately developed National Broadband Plan 2020 to 2025. That plan has been launched and unveiled by Mr. President on the 19 March 2020 this year at Communications and Digital Economy Complex in Bora here in Abuja. Our target in that plan is to ensure that by 2025, 90%, a minimum of 90% of our citizens have access to broadband in Nigeria. When it comes to land mass, we want to ensure that a minimum of 70% of our land mass has access to broadband penetration. Why minimum of 70%? Still, we have many desert places, many places that are unoccupied, that you may not need any broadband. It could not be profitable. It could not be important to anybody. Particularly, if you look at land mass in Niger State, I had a meeting just last week with uh, one member of House of Reps from Niger. He was telling me that from one local government to another, in Niger State, you can travel for 10 hours. 
and you will discover that the land, majority of the land, has not been occupied by any bodies. So in that situation, what you need is to provide access along the road, and maybe a few kilometers into the bush. So our target is a minimum of 90% of our population should have access to broadband by 2025. And 70% minimum of our landmass should have access to it. So from around 30% or 31 or 32, today broadband penetration by end of uh, July before August, it was up to 41.18. So this tells you that at least a lot has been achieved within less than a year. The increase is almost 10% within less than a year of what we have achieved. But previously, if you go through history, you'll discover the first broadband penetration in Nigeria has not been documented. There is not any available record to tell you. But most probably, it could be from West Africa of Marine, which came to Nigeria in 2002. So from 2002 to up to 2019, the penetration was around 31-32% maximum. But from that time to this time around, we achieved almost 10% in one year. And maybe the penetration significantly started in 2010 by Glow and Men 1. But so, so far it's encouraging because the penetration now is more than 40%. And the way we address the major challenges that uh, impede our broadband penetration, most probably the penetration will be increasing by the day. Because the two major challenges we addressed recently is number one, right of way. Right of way had been a major challenge to broadband penetration. We are able to address it through engaging Nigeria Governors Forum, engaging Federal Ministry of Works and Housing, and many more. Now, Rightway has been harmonized at 145 naira per linear meter. Before that intervention, some states were collecting 4,500 naira, 5,000 naira, some even 16,000 naira per linear meter. But now it has been harmonized as 145 naira per linear meter. And that reduced the price of uh, broadband penetration significantly. A case example, a case study of one local government to another inquirer state. The price before was up to 650 million naira to provide connectivity from one local government to another. With our modest intervention today, at the price of 150,000 naira, that can provide that connectivity through right of way. So look at from 650 million naira to 150,000 naira. So this is a major challenge to broadband penetration and the price of broadband. That issue has been addressed significantly. Then another issue is a critical national infrastructure. Telecommunication facilities are, were being vandalized in Nigeria for many years. And many investors are afraid to invest because of vandalization. In June this year, through our letter of request, Mr. President has directed security institutions through Office of National Security Advisor to ensure that critical national infrastructure when it comes to telecommunications and either and other uh, digital facilities are protected all over the country. We believe this is highly commendable and it is a clear indication of the willingness of Mr. President to ensure that our country remains very safe for investors to come and invest. These two issues were the major obstacles when it comes to broadband penetration with all sense of humility, we are able to address them, and we do hope that broadband penetration will increase in Nigeria and quality of service will be enhanced significantly as well. Under solid infrastructure also is data center. We have so many world-class data centers in Nigeria, and we are working on providing many more. We have like a Galaxy Backbone data center. It's a world-class data center. Main One data center is a world-class data center. And uh, RAC Center is another world-class data center. And we are also working on coming up with new data centers that will ensure that our data is very secured and there is provision for us to save huge amount of data in the country. Number four pillar is a uh, service infrastructure. 
is up, all about providing digital platforms to conduct our activities, like through e-commerce. Nigeria Immigration Services has been doing well when it comes to digitalization of their activities. Commendation to the CG as well. And uh, the same with Corporate Affairs Commission, they have been doing well. Central Bank of Nigeria has been doing well. So there are many institutions. JAM has been doing well. So there are many institutions that have been doing well when it comes to digital services. It's all about digitalization of our activities. You don't need to travel today to apply for your password. You can apply online. Many citizens from abroad are applying online. So this is all what digital services is all about. To make life easier for your citizens, that many services can be provided for them without coming to you physically and unnecessarily. And this is very important and is part of our digital economy. Number five is soft infrastructure. Soft infrastructure is all about providing what is related to cyber security to ensure our systems are well secured. And we have been doing a lot in that regard through creating awareness. Awareness is key to the success of our cyber security in Nigeria. And we have been providing training and retraining for many institutions. And we have computer emergency response and readiness team that has been uh, enlightening citizens and notifying potential institutions uh, or report that has been notifying institutions about potential attacks. And this is one of the things we have done during one cry attack. The impact on our country was very minimal. So we have been proactive when it comes to soft infrastructure, notifying institutions about the steps to be taken in order to ensure that they minimize or they protect themselves from cyber attack. Then number seven is digital services or digital society and emerging technologies. This is all about incorporating other states into our journey for a digital Nigeria. It cannot be achieved by federal government alone. That is why the policy is called national digital policy. National digital economy policy is not a federal, it's a national one. So that is why we have been engaging states to ensure they key in to it. Many states came up with institutions that will promote digital economy, like Ondo State, like Lagos State, Plateau State, recently Gombe State, and uh, even this week I discovered that uh, Cross River State as well came up with another agency or institution that will promote digital economy. So this is part of what we have been doing to achieve digital society by incorporating each and every component of your society into it. In addition to that, we have been contacting many institutions on how to key into our national digital economy. And by doing that, even through Agric, we have been doing that. We started what we call high-tech Agric. It's just providing training to our farmers on how to deploy modern technologies in some selected places and enhance their productivity and efficiency. If you look at the landmass of the Netherlands as a country, it's not more than that of Niger State. It's not even up to that. And the population of the Netherlands, if there is census in Nigeria, it could not be higher than the population of either Lagos or Kano State. But what they have been generating through agriculture is more than what we have been generating through oil and gas. In 2018 and 2019, what they generated through agri is more than 10 times what Nigeria has generated through oil and gas. By the time we are struggling to generate 20 billion USD through oil and gas, they were generating over 120 billion USD. 120 billion euro, not even USD. So what they have been generating is by far is more than 10 times higher than what we have been generating through oil and gas, while their own is through agri. So it's all part of digital society and emerging technologies. In security institution, emerging technology is key also to your success. Today, if you go through Internet of Things, most importantly, artificial intelligence, there are many ways that our security institutions can enhance their performance by deploying emerging technology gadgets. 
like in the area of robotic technology, area of drone, in the area of uh, quantum computing, big data analytics. Like in Qatar, they only use big data analytics to categorize their citizens, to peace-loving citizens, non-peace-loving citizens, to even criminals among them. They categorize almost everything through using big data analytics. As long as your citizens are online, or they manage any social media, or they have any trace online, you will be able to know their category easily. It's all through big data analytics. And this is part of emerging technologies. Today, homes are being built through emerging technologies, like using 3D. The first biggest home has been built in United Arab Emirates on a land that is less than 650 square meters. You can build a home through 3D technology today within 24 hours. You can build a two-bedroom flat for your citizens just by using 3D technology. Go to YouTube, you will see it. There is a home that has been built, the biggest home to be built by 3D technology in United Arab Emirates. It is available in YouTube. So there are many ways that your job can be enhanced through technology. Most importantly, emerging technology. If you look at it clearly, you will say, emerging technology is all there to support security institutions. The critical ones, big data analytics, when it comes to intelligence, data gathering, making sense out of it. Because the more you acquire data and information, the more it makes your work much, much easier for you. The same with artificial intelligence. The same with robotic technology. There are many emerging technology gadgets that will make your work much, much easier. And I do hope this will be a topic of uh, another presentation by another maybe guest speaker or by myself to this audience or any other uh, forum. It's very important to see how emerging technologies can be deployed to enhance our security institutions and defend our country. I think this is very important. And I do hope that uh, this is, one of, is, is going to be one of your major takeaways from this lecture, please. How emerging technologies or disruptive technologies can be used to enhance our security. Look at big data analytics. The way you can generate data and make sense out of it. How to deploy robotic technology today. How to use drones today. Artificial intelligence, quantum computing, cloud computing, and many more. They are to enhance your work and make it and improve your precision and accuracy in whatever you do. Then the last one, num pillar number eight, is indigenous content. It's all about making sure that we produce what we eat and we eat what we, we produce. Today, our capital flight in telecommunications sector is worrisome. According to a report by Association of Telecommunications Companies in Nigeria, our annual capital flight is over 2 billion USD. It's over 2.1 billion USD uh, annually. It's worrisome. So our effort is to ensure that whatever we need is being produced locally in Nigeria. And when it comes to services, priority should be given to the citizens of our country. So this is an area where we feel we have a lot to do and we have started doing that. We are working on a policy on how to promote our indigenous content in telecommunications sector. We have achieved a lot when it comes to IT sector. We have improved our own performance by over 500 percent, where we usually deploy what we produce. The major challenge now is in the telecommunications sector. And with the policy we have been working, I do hope that uh, by the end of 2021, we will be able to turn things around for the better. And uh, finally, this is all what we have been doing when it comes to national digital economy for a digital Nigeria. And I want to use the opportunity to invite our security institutions to look into the policy and look at the role they can play. The journey is for all. 
if you key into the success will be higher and you have a significant role to play most importantly no economy will be promoted and developed globally without security if there is security in place the economy will be developed easily it is because of this i feel that security institutions are the major stakeholders for national digital economy policy for a digital Nigeria. When you key into it, our success definitely will be enhanced. You have been part and parcel of it, but we want to ensure that your participation has been improved. And this is in summary what the journey is all about, and I do hope you appreciate the presentation. Thank you for listening. <laughs>
I therefore consider the delivered graduation lecture for National Defense College, course 28, which was titled Digital Economy and National Development in Nigeria, very important due to constant revolutions in information and digital fields. Many nations across the world are innovating to exploit the enormous economic benefits of the digital economy. In Nigeria, we have taken the fledging steps to adopt, adapt, and internalize the digital economy in a functional manner. I am pleased to say that Dr. Isa Ali Ibrahim Pantami has been at the forefront of the drive towards digital economy in Nigeria. Let me state that the transformation of the erstwhile Ministry of Communications to its current status owes a lot to its prompting and efforts. I am therefore glad that the College did not only choose this topic for discussion today, but actually caught the Master of Digital Economy in Nigeria to speak on it. We are grateful to the Honorable Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Dr. Isa <laughs> Ibrahim Pantemi, for justice to the topic. Dr. Isa's outstanding performances and achievements in the information and technology industry made him the perfect choice to address this distinguished audience on the subject matter. I am therefore not surprised at the quality of delivery and the depth of knowledge which he shared with us today. He continues to provide the needed leadership in driving the information and communications industry in the country. Indeed, just recently, it was reported that our country witnessed about 14.07% ICT contribution to the nation's gross domestic product, a fiat that is unprecedented in our history. I am sure that prior to the delivering of the lecture, many may have pondered on what was the nexus between security, defense, and digital economy. The connections are potentially in two categories. First, are the huge potentials of the digital economy to digitally engage our teeming youths in diverse ways and cause economic growth. Also raw elements in the society and transnational criminals could exploit the internet to perpetuate money laundering, kidnapping and terrorism. More so, the adaptation of digital economy could result in increased crime, cyber crimes, thus undermining national security. For these reasons, it is important that security and defense establishments show more than a cursory interest in the digital economy. Having listened to this well-delivered lecture, I am therefore happy to state that we are now well informed on the potential benefits and our roles in the digital economy. On this note, I wish to commend the Commandant, staff and the entire college community for their collective efforts in pursuing the ideals of the college. In particular, I commend you for organizing the graduation lecture, which was exciting, educative, and will be helpful to the economic and security needs of the Nigerian nation. Thank you all, and may God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. May I request a special guest of honor joins the Honorable Minister on the stage. Next is a presentation of gifts to the guest speaker. May I humbly at this stage invite the commandants to invite 
the representative of the Honorable Minister of Defense to kindly appreciate the guest speaker on behalf of the college, the Commandant Sir. Thank you, sir. It will be uncharitable not to properly thank the guest speaker for such a very wonderful lecture and presentation we have received. To do the honor, it's my privilege to invite the Deputy Commandant Director of Studies, Major General E.A. Atu, to give the vote of thanks. The Deputy Commandant, sir. Thank you very much, uh, the Master of Ceremonies. It is important that we reemphasize that digitalization is no longer a luxury, but a necessity in Nigeria. Thank you, Mr. Guest Speaker. The Special Guest of Honor, the Honorable Minister of Defense, ably represented by the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Defense, Al Haji Sabu Zakari. The, the guest speaker, the Chief of Defense Staff, Service Chiefs, and Inspector General of Police, have been represented here. The Commandant of the National Defense College, the Controller General of the Nigerian Immigration Service, distinguished invited guests, participants of Course 28, Members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, I am again Major General Elias Atu, the Deputy Commandant and Director of Studies. Indeed, this educative lecture has no doubt provided the distinguished participants and the entire college community with an informed view of the implications of the digital economy on national development in Nigeria. Let me start by acknowledging and appreciating the effort of a highly esteemed guest speaker, the Honorable Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Dr. Issa Ali Ibrahim Pantami, for eloquently delivering a well thought out and excellent lecture titled Digital Economy and National Development in Nigeria. The guest speaker, sir, your lecture actually demonstrated your unique understanding of the subject matter, which is indeed contemporary in view of our digitalized world in a COVID-19 era. So let me also assure you that the challenges highlighted in your paper today will be exhaustively studied with a view to preferring possible strategies resolving them for enhanced national development. We are most grateful and inspired by your great ideas. And I'm pleased um, to state that the college will definitely collaborate with your ministry in skills development. May I also appreciate in absentia the chairman Senate Committee on Defense, 
Distinguished Senator Ali Wamako and the Chairman, House Committee on Defense, Honorable Baba Jimmy Benson, for their legislative support to the college. I also wish to express our sincere gratitude to the Honorable Minister of Defense, Major General Bashir Magashe, retired, for his encouragement, untiring support, and confidence in the college management team. My sincere appreciation goes to other esteemed members of the governing board, the Chief of Defense Staff, and the service chiefs ably represented here, who have been unrelenting in their quest to reposition the college to achieve its strategic objectives. Special gratitude also goes to the representatives from services and police headquarters, ministries, departments, and agencies of government, and all, and all our hallowed invited guests for honoring our invitation to this very important graduation lecture for course 28. Permit me to also appreciate the foresight of our commandant, Rear Admiral M. M. Kajiri, for providing strategic direction <laughs> and leadership towards ensuring the success of today's graduation lecture. Sir, you have once again proven your mental as a visionary leader, and we indeed appreciate you, sir. I equally acknowledge members of faculty, research fellows, and staff of the college for their efforts in ensuring the success of this program. We recognize your efforts, and I commend you all. Finally, let me acknowledge the members of the press corps. As always, we have continued to enlighten the public on our activities and programs as the highest military and strategic training institution in Nigeria and indeed Sub-Saharan Africa. To all our esteemed guests, we thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. And we wish you all journey messages back to your various destinations. Thank you very much and God bless. With the vote of thanks, we have come to the end of today's occasion. Please, we are all expected to wait in the hall while the guest of honor and all special invited guests uh, take their leave. Band. Thank you, sir. There will be no group photograph after this event. However, all participants